custom transitions. It's a dissolve and transition. All right, this is Evan Abrams, and I'm going to show you how to make a custom transition for yourself and your shows inside of After Effects using the track mat and specifically the Luma track mats. And we're going to make an example of something that kind of is a little bit fancier than a dissolve. So let's start off by getting a couple of things to dissolve between so I can show you what I'm talking about. Uh, we'll use these. And we'll make a new composition, 10 seconds long, whatever, whatever. None of that is important. Moving right along. So we've got a couple of things. We've got the A and the B, and we want the A to dissolve into the B. Now, a normal dissolve uses just taking the opacity down of one layer, and then it becomes the other layer. But we're a little bit too slick for that. Let's start off by making a new solid. Make that solid white. Sure. And we're going to use a little something something called the turbulent noise. Blam. Look at that. That is a bunch of clouds. Um, so that's fun. Now, a couple of things to start off with is it's not exactly looking like we want, but, you know, we can. it's something we can work with. So let's start off by making a little bit more contrasty. Maybe set it up to 200 here. And let's make it a bit bigger. Like, let's make some larger, chunkier type of stuff going on here. Maybe something like this. Let's put this up a bit. Yeah, it's looking a bit better. All right. So, that's good. Now, what we want to do is we're actually going to set this out over about a two second uh, time frame here. We're going to be affecting actually a lot of these properties. Uh, one of them is going to be the, the uh, brightness, one of them is going to be the scale, uh, and uh, we might need to affect the contrast a little bit and we're definitely going to need to do something about the evolution and for this one, for the evolution you alt click on the stopwatch for it and it'll give you this little uh, prompt down here to put in an expression and just type in time, that's T-I-M-E and then the fancy asterisk above the 8 which is multiply, multiply that by 100 and what this does is causes the uh, layer to constantly shift and change uh, over time, so that'll be helpful. Adds a little bit of more organic look to it. Um, and what this expression means is it's going to take the time value. So right now the time value is two times 100 equals 200. And here zero times zero is zero, so it's going to all the way up. Okay, so that's that one. And we've got keyframes here at the start. Now we want it to start as black as it gets, so crank that brightness down until it disappears. Let's say it disappears at like a buck fifty. That's good enough. Now move ahead to two seconds, and now pump this up until it's all white. Hmm, that's pretty good. Let's say that happened at like one fifty. So when you see it go through, kind of like that. And that'll be about it. Maybe we don't have to do anything with the contrast. And the scale, let's just set its ending scale to 250, so it kind of grows a little bit as it's coming through. More... All right, that's pretty good. Let's just look at that a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty organic, I think. Um, and now we go back to what we wanted to use it for. Now. We're going to be going from what is completely black to completely white. And we want that to affect the alpha of the A. So your track mat layer number two here is going to be the Luma inverted. So everything's cool and then... Ah, kind of like that. So come along and then that happens. So that's pretty good. Um, hit U to bring up all the properties here, and you know what I would do is uh, maybe easy ease them, maybe not, because really that looks pretty good in a linear way. And it kind of has that bleeding on effect a little bit. So there you go. You've got one thing turning into another. And if you want to reuse this effect, it's actually pretty simple. You just uh, take this layer, you go layer 
pre-compose. Move all the attributes into this new composition. Okay. Now open that up and you'll see, you know, everything's still happening just the way you left it. And now you're going to go composition, make movie, just like that. Leave it as lossless and let's uh, you know, put it somewhere where we'll be able to find it. And now let's just render that out. Rendering, rendering song. Okay, now go back into your comp, grab this thing here, and let's just, uh, you know, import that in here. And uh, so now we're just going to replace this comp, select the layer here, hold down Alt, click and drag from your project window on top of it, and boom, it just got replaced. What? That is insane. You just replaced a thing with another thing, which is great when you start to... Uh, getting into complex stuff and using placeholders and trying to make a quick swaps on the fly but you get the idea so what's happening is this layer below is reading the darkness and brightness as its new alpha channel so when it's totally white well white is supposed to be on and black is supposed to be off so using the inverted that's how we make it go away if you want to do the reverse of making things come on let's say like a, you know like a new uh, text layer like spooky text so we've got this kind of weird text that I wanted to put on for no apparent reason and then uh, we just go in here we grab this uh, pre-comp that we brought out and now we use it to uh, bring that on. Ah, oh, spooky text. It's spooky. Whoa. Whoa. Has absolutely no context. That's totally cool, though. So yeah, that's about it. Um, you can now reuse this in other projects, send it to your friends, send it to your mom, sell it, I guess, if you want. Some people do. Uh, you can do whatever you want, really. Um, it just helps you define a bit of a better transition between things, gives you a bit more control over your transitions. I'm sure that there are some presets out there that you can use that are just as interesting, but if you ever wanted to do it for yourself, now you can. And depending on what tools you have at your disposal, you might be kind of limited. But nonetheless, this is how to use the Luma values, you know, between darkness and lightness, to affect the transparency of another layer, be it, you know, a full frame clean plate or graphics or whatever. So go out there, have fun, experiment. I hope this uh, helps you out and helps you make cool stuff. Uh, I've been using it for a while and enjoying it whenever people come to bother me for interesting transitions. And uh, I suppose that's about it. Again, I'm Evan Abrams, uh, thanks for watching. There are some other transitions in this series as well. If you want to go ahead and have a peruse, I'll, I'll link those somewhere. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks for checking it out. Uh, check me out on Twitter at uh, EC Abrams. Uh, subscribe to this if you want to see more stuff. And, you know, I'll see you around the internet. Thanks, have a nice day.